What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Today we're going to teach you how to become a millionaire. That's right. How to safeguard your assets and uh, hopefully save yourself from the depreciating ringgit. Let's go. We've got a special guest today. I, I think I need to rephrase myself, Ryan. I can't, I can't mislead people to think that they're going to earn like a million bucks by listening to this show. Damn it, you, you got me excited, you know. I was <laughs> like, okay, finally, uh, I'm going to be a millionaire, you know, after this recording. Like, it's just this, like this, this is my chance to be a millionaire. It's just like those clickbait political uh, news that you read on Facebook, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Oh, 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 Allah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm very excited because uh, I, 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 it's been a long time coming. I've been trying to get this guy uh, on the show because you know I I was scro- I, I won't lie I was scrolling scrolling through Facebook one day and what caught my attention was how he ha- he was live streaming himself and I was like whoa this guy's setup is so clear so clean and like you know his interior is like so nice and then I realized that oh this guy's talking about financial advice ladies and gentlemen we have on the show today he's known as Mr Money TV on YouTube but I know him as Mr Money TV. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm sorry man I mean like Mr. Money TV Kind of caught my attention Because I'm Chinese And I'm damn greedy So I see money I'm like Okay what's this It's all about the money man Yeah because all the Financial gurus on YouTube Has shit backgrounds That like you know Do now Do now Sign up for my course And I'll teach you How to make passive income But this guy He's got like some Massive setup If you If you watch him right now On our YouTube page Like dude You're putting us to shame Me and Ryan Will just like Oh okay We're we'll filmmakers make this <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know he's got like the foreground and he's got like the background all blurred out. So Peter, how are you, man? I'm doing good, man. Thank you very much, Dean, for inviting me here. Yeah, yeah. And so, so, I mean, so, so. Uh, sorry to, to to cut you off, but just just before we move on, for the benefit of our listeners who who tuned in and, and, and have not heard of Mr. Money TV before, could you please explain to us or or introduce yourself and tell us what you do? All right. So, firstly. Um, Mr. Money is just the YouTube name, right? But in real life, I'm actually called Peter Yong. Do you actually know my real name, Jin? I know lah. I'm your friend <laughs> on Facebook lah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, people call me Peter Yong actually in real life. But most of the time as I go out, you know, sometimes people just call me Mr. Money right now. So, let me just start very quickly why this name Mr. Money came up. Because... Uh, for me, when I first started the YouTube channel, uh, never in my mind I really was thinking about uh, being an influencer or like you know getting like somewhat famous or whatnot. So yep. I thought you know coming up with a funky name that everyone can remember will probably be easier, and eventually it can be a channel that runs on itself, right? Yeah, yeah. So that that was how it came about, and I thought like, hey, since money is the the thing that I'm gonna be talking about, so why not just make it easy and call myself Mister Money rather than. <laughs> Then something not, not truly a bad creative, name, right? Yeah. Not a bad name, actually, so Mr. Is, Money. The truth is, actually, I wasn't creative enough to find any other name. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, yeah, okay, la, money, money talks. You know why money talks? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but sometimes when you try so hard to be creative, that's when you come up with the worst names ever. But like when you just like don't really think about it, Mr. Money yeah. TV is straightforward. And you know, like for me, is I knew what I was getting into. Uh, Mr. Money TV. Okay, he obviously talks about money, but okay, Mr. Money TV. What do you do? What do you talk about? What do you teach? All right. So uh, I myself am actually a registered financial planner. So I've been oh. in the industry for the past ten years. Yeah. Uh, I I couldn't work for people at the moment. I start working for people for like about half a year. Then I just quit my job and I <laughs> went into doing uh, financial planning. And for right. those of you who actually know it, uh, as much as any financial planner, we keep telling people that we are advisor la, consultant or whatnot. End of the day, it's still a sales job la. Simple as oh, that. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, when you go into advising, you're you're still trying to convince someone to buy something, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you don't get paid. I mean, right. Malaysians, we we are, we are cheapo. We don't pay for advice. That, that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you will get a text from your friend. Hey, as a friend, uh, can you just advise me uh, and tell me what I should do with my money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, la, can la, friend. La. You know what I mean? It's, it's, and then, you know, when you give your friend good advice, then he will tell his friend, hey, I've got a friend, right, who gives them good advice. Uh. You can text him, uh, you tell him yeah, you're my friend. Then he will tell you. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, that, I mean, I get you. I get you. That's so, right. That's right. Yeah. And then they'll say, like, you know, maybe I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Then you share with me something. I'll buy you a lunch or something. So usually now, Days when people tell me that they say like, why not I buy you a cup of coffee 
and then uh, you share with me some financial advice or help me out with my finances. I usually tell them that, you know what? If I like you, why not you come? I buy you the lunch, and then I give you advice. Oh, because, oh. <laughs> because I think like my time is worth more than a coffee and that that, that, yeah. that lunch. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like so if I, you're, I'd rather buy you. I'd rather buy you. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, if you're a financial, if you're a financial planner, I mean, you're helping someone to make money off of his finances. Am I correct to say that? Um, you see, that that's the thing that 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 got me started doing the YouTube channel. The yeah. reason being is because. You know, as I as I grew up, as I started in this financial planning industry myself, right? I find that it's very damn confusing. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's, it's very confusing. I, I believe until today, right? There are some guys who actually come and approach the both of you and tell you, like, "Hey, you know, I'm a planner. This and that. This is what I can do. Why don't you pay me a fee, or either you know, I only charge you commission or whatnot." But but you you kind of are unclear of what are they helping you do. And then when you ask them this question, like, "Are you going to help me make money?" The chances are they are going to tell you no. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, mm. they're gonna tell you no. I'm not gonna help you make money. I'm just gonna help you manage your finance better. Right. Now, mm-hmm. this means that they are gonna help to be a listener, mm-hmm. and you gotta sit down with them, and they're gonna tell them like, uh, what you need, what are your thoughts, what are your ideas, what kind of future you wanna be. Do you wanna send your children to here or there? Then they will do some calculations <clears throat> and help you to calculate how much is the money needed to send your children maybe to UK or like if you wanna have a Retirement where you get an income of five thousand every month. Then mm-hmm. I I'm supposed to sit down and do that calculation with you on right. how much money you're supposed to be saved up to reach there. Now, right. so this is the advice part, and okay. actually all these are formulas. It's oh. all formulas, and the chances are if you have been to, if you did mathematics right or slightly advanced mathematics like. Uh, form five, you know, at maths or whatnot. That kind I of freaking stuff. hate at maths. I failed at maths. <laughs> yeah. I'm not shy to freaking admit it. Yeah, <laughs> but as usual, you know, my maths was really bad. But when you add an RM in front, it becomes <laughs> a lot more important. <laughs> 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 two plus two is bad, but RM two plus RM two, hey, oh, yeah. this one yeah, more yeah. essential, this you know. Was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can understand. <laughs> okay, okay. So you you you're, a, you're okay. So you give people advice. You help them you help them manage their finances a lot better right and then Supposedly, in the process of yeah, yeah <laughs> in, in, in the process of that it, 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 is it okay when people talk about financial planners okay you you give this person advice you tell him all right you want to retire at this age okay this is what you need to do is it at the at the discretion or is it at the the decision of the person or do they give the decision making to the financial planner all right so the decision making will still come down to you so mm-hmm. you see, as I give you those kind of advice, what I'll do is that I'll will so-called generate a report for you telling you like, okay, look, this is your goal. So this is what you need. This is how much you need to save. And then assessing your current investment portfolios. This is what you have. I think you need to adjust it here and there. And here's where the product selling comes in. Because at the end of the day, if I tell you you need to save a 1 million ringgit, right? Mm-hmm. The question is still, where are you going to save it, right? Yep. So you earn through commission. Right, right. Now, mm. uh, there are some financial planners who don't earn through commission. They are totally fee based, uh, mm-hmm. but that's quite rare in Malaysia. Usually, Malaysia is a combination. They charge you a fee, and then they they also charge you on the commission. Right. right? Yeah. And uh, at the end of the day, here is where you, as a client or mm-hmm. as a customer, you need to make the decision of what you really want to do with your money. Because I okay. can't force you. I right. can only tell you like where you can put your money. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. But at the end of the day, it still comes down to yourself. So you'll see many people who at the end of the day, they they engage a planner, but they still invest in stuff like money game and so on and so forth. I mean, the mm-hmm. most is, I just don't want to tell my planner that I'm going to invest in that thing. La. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. not obligated to tell you everything. Ma. Yeah. And yeah. that's the very common situation that I find with many people. Like I have a few couple of friends who are, who are really, really high net worth, right? Right. And they engage a planner who charge them like 5000 a year just for advice alone. Right. Yeah, and then um, end of the day, they still buy a lot of other stuff without telling their planner. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. It's more of so like, a, okay, screw you. I think I know a little bit better than you. I need you're my foundation. And yeah. Okay, la, I gamble so on this a bit, lah. Maybe so, can, la. So what happens yeah. in that case, like for example, like you say, uh, is a combination of fee and commission, right? So of course, mm-hmm. as a financial planner, you're trying to plan the best for your client, and then and then you agree with this yes commission based thing, and then they go and spend all that money. So it turns out your commission is like. For like a better word, yeah, already la. So yeah, isn't it kind of like a a, a a shitty situation? Also, which to be fair, also you don't really have a say in that 
Because if your client want to spend their money, then they they get to spend their money lah. You know, it's their money. Right? Correct. Yeah. That that's why I say at the end of the day, it's, it's a sales job. Right. It, mm. It's not really as much as uh because let us be practical. I'm I'm a very practical person, right? Mm. <clears throat> Now at the end of the day, I can I can sit down with a person for 10 sessions, but at the end of the day, it, if it's not gonna give me money, how am I gonna support myself? Through this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and it doesn't look very good on me as well. If as a financial planner, I have no money myself, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will pay you. <laughs> like you. Hey, you know, learn to manage your one million. And then the fellow asks you back, "Do you have one million? Uh, no, I have uh, zero in my bank account right now. Like, but I have ex- no no Wait, wait, wait! You can say that I I I I, I have exposure. <laughs> I pay you in exposure. <laughs> correct. Oh, wow. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So so there's that irony as well. And most most of the financial planner themselves are not very rich. Right, uh, so there's this whole thing that came about, and you're always torn between commission. You're torn mm. between a really giving a good advice, and sometimes real good advice involves people not buying anything from you, <laughs> and, mm. and that, that's going to be tough, right? So, yeah. uh, if I, I after a while, I I came to realize, like, look, that that's just the fact of the, of the job itself, mm-hmm. and after 10 years in it, I kind of felt that like. You know, I wanted something more. I think there there should be a way where I can reach to public and give them good quality advice yep. without needing to charge or charge at the very minimal. But the only mm-hmm. way to do that is actually by compounding the number of people that I meet. And I only have 24 hours. It's impossible for me to do that. So I thought right. about it. You know what? I've been seeing Genie Boy doing videos, right? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> maybe. What if I can do good videos And and put it up online, make it entertaining, and people watch it. Let's see. After a year, will will anyone come to me and say, "Let me pay you for making such videos?" Right? Yeah. yeah. And how's that? Has that? How's that worked out for you, though? Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah. Nice. Turns out, nice. Turns out, yeah. <laughs> turns out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like, okay, so. I I I've been watching some of your videos. That I find it sometimes like really really interesting. Just to like you know the, the thing is the the more you know it 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 just gives you a more informed decision on the it basically gives you assurance of the things that you, the the decisions that you make lah. But I think I remember talking to you on WhatsApp and I said that you know like the reason why I wanted to talk about this uh, I wanted to have this session was because we've always been brought up uh, in a way where people always tell you hey you want to make money right work hard. And for me is I used to think that. You know, when I was younger, I used to be hustling. You know, when before I joined radio, I was doing events and I I was doing photography. I was doing uh, wedding MC jobs. Work as many jobs as you can, and uh, you know, uh, trying to save up the money. But the the thing is, people don't people forget to realize that like no matter how hard you hustle, you also have to spend the money because you know you gotta survive. You gotta eat. You gotta you gotta grow up. You got there are things that you want to buy. You know, you want that car. You want that house. You want that that flashy uh, pair of sneakers and stuff like that. And it's like okay now my law since I need to keep up with this lifestyle I work even harder, and that's where I think like when I came until like when I was like 30 years old I read like you know what, um what ha- what I did was I re- I went to a bank and I found this thing called fixed deposit can you imagine, <laughs> I was 30 years old and I was like oh there's this thing called fixed deposit, oh wow it gives you four percent a year so what do I need to do? It's like oh you just put it here lah and then now uh, we pay you your fixed deposit monthly I'm like whoa no shit. And all of a sudden, I'm like, ah, oh, this like couple of hundred bucks can pay for my electric bill. Che, wow, my capital is like, you know, is not touched. And then that's where I realized, like, you know what? Maybe I should start studying a little bit more about. And then I told this to my friend. I remember having a conversation with this about my friend, and my friend said that I told, hey, you know what? I'm using my FD to pay off some of my household, uh, whatever. Not, yeah lah. Your money should work for you, okay? What do you expect to do? Just save it, lah. And that's where it kind of like changed my perception on a lot of things. And I was like, "Oh wow!" That's where I started reading a lot, and that's when I realized that you know there are a lot of people like me who do not know how to make the best of their money, and that's why we have Mr. Money TV on that's the me show right today. There. But do what do you, what do you think? Do you make the best use of the money? <laughs> do you do you think that do you think do you think that's the 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 very common case these days that people just do not know how to make their money work for them, and they always say that, "Oh, you know, if I want to be rich, I just got to work hard." Yeah. Yeah, I think there's um generally in the market, there's two kind of person, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's the the kind who actually really have, really do not know that they can put their money into use. Uh, one of the main reasons is because they are not earning enough. Mm-hmm. <coughs> because let's let's be be, be honest about it, investment only comes when you can earn enough money. 
if you don't okay. even earn enough money, you can't even save a single dollar. Let, let's not talk about people who got spending problem. Uh. Just talk mm-hmm. about basic. Uh. Mm. You got a problem with with living your life. Let's <laughs> not talk about investment. Your problem is actually really working hard. And, and that's great. You know, go and work hard. And yes. and I, I think until today, Gene, you work very hard. I myself, I work very hard, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, at the end of the day, all of us have to work hard to actually make that money. Then there's the other kind of people who, who actually don't see investing as something important because they think that things are just going on fine, la, right? Yeah. And yep. there are a few reasons that that can contribute to that. I think number one is the kind of people who really just generally are ignorance is bliss, right? Mm-hmm. And, and that can't be helped. Uh, I think most of them actually kind of woke up when this COVID thing happened and locked down businesses and so on. Yes. Then there's the other group of people who generally keep thinking that investment is very difficult and very risky. Yes. Mm. And, yeah. and I think one of the main reason is because during any one of us who grew up during the 1990s, right? Mm-hmm. When we witness our parents going through 1997 or hear your parents talk about it, you kind of have this impression that investment is a very scary thing. Yeah, it, this it was this is for the, is it the 1997 was the financial crisis crash, was it? Yes, yeah. that's yeah. right. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, the Asian financial crisis. Yeah. So you hear a lot of people talk about like how they 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 killed themselves, they suicide mm-hmm. because they lost all their money and so on. Mm-hmm. And we have this idea that you know investment is dangerous. Lah. So yep. then as we grow up, we kind of have this idea that fixed deposit is probably the safest investment that you have. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, every other thing there is a risk, including unit trust and whatnot, and then it's very, very risky. Yeah. Now, but when you really understand finance, right, you will realize that risk is actually relevant to your knowledge. Because put it this way, I believe you have met people who tell you this one thing. Mm -hmm. They tell you that, hey, investing in stock is very dangerous. Yeah. But the joker, right, go and buy a factory that is $5 million because (laughs) he tell you that I can score that contract. (laughs) (laughs) Does it make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, whatever you do, uh, don't invest in stocks. You got, Uh, you got 10 million, uh, don't, don't put it in stocks, you know, Mm. maybe, Mm. you know, buy a house. You know, uh, or 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 what? By most of most of the time, it's always your your parents like my mom. Oh, you got money? Uh, invest in property. Invest in property. Invest. It's always like that, you know. Uh, you know, yes. they never like stocks. Are, hey, don't pay share market. Share market always crash one. Then uh, this it's always like that. But um, I mean, obviously, I have done my own research. Not not to, again. We don't want to give any advice to everybody. You need to kind of, again, like what you said. Uh, when you earn a bit more money, you tend to a little bit be a bit be a bit, little bit more riskier. Because there are some disposable income that you're like, okay, I can afford to lose this. I'm not trying to say that, you know, we're all millionaires, but you know, even if you, are, you can afford to, to lose 50 ringgit, you put it into an investment that can maybe in the long run double up, you know what I mean? Mm. That's, that's the risk over there. And then, you know, as in the long run, you know, for me, lah, in the long run, my risk became a little bit bigger in, in the terms of uh, capital size, lah. So that's, mm. that's how I ventured into investing. Like, okay, I'm ready for the next step. Okay, then I need 12 into it and then calculate. But like, like, like for, for someone like you who's a financial planner going through, like, do you think like Malaysians in general should be more aware on how or should, should, do you encourage people to basically invest in general? I definitely encourage people to invest. Uh, I mean, I can I cannot say no, right? If not, later don't watch my channel. <laughs> 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 I mean, uh, okay, for myself, I think that everyone should invest and everyone need to invest. The one of the main reasons is because of inflation, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Inflation is about like what three percent based on official data, but if you go to the harm in store just down the road, you'll know that it's not three percent; it's more than that, right? Yes. And the only way to catch up with that is if you really invest your money rather mm-hmm. than you know just leaving there. Yeah. yeah. So I th- I think it's a need, and especially when right now like you look at FD rate is so low. Yeah. Like you you have no choice already. Yeah. <laughs> what else <laughs> you where else you gonna put your money? Yeah. Because yeah. like like okay so, again like I'm I'm not coming into this as someone who has read a lot and knows a lot. So for me it's like trust me if I ask stupid questions. Look, uh, at the current situation that's happening in our country, as we all know that today you know our leader has left us. Uh, yeah, so we'd like to say thank you. <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry, wrong, wrong sound effects. Wrong sound. <laughs> sure, wrong, wrong. Oh uh, no, wrong sound effects. effects. <laughs> so sorry, sorry. This one. Yeah, sorry. Uh, we'd like to bid him farewell. Thank you very much for your <laughs> your time with us. But anyways, um, we all know that the ringgit is uh depreciating, right? Mm. And and for me, it's like I asked this question before. We're working so hard. We're working so hard to make as much money as we can. But when you're making so much money and your ringgit is depreciating, is that like you're going back one one day sooner or later? You're going back to square one. 
So where does why the so my question to you is where does someone start? Because there are a lot of people out there who was like Ryan. I asked Ryan, "Hey Ryan, you invested it? I don't know how. Where I does someone? Don't yeah, know how. where does someone start? Because the thing is, the, the uh, people automatically think. I remember last time when someone come to me, "Hey bro, you got invest? I say, "Bro, where I we got money to invest? Like in my bank, maybe I got like uh twenty thousand dollars, thirty thousand dollars, right around there that I've saved for like maybe ten years." Oh, cannot lah, bro. You know, it's like that's the my life savings. You know, it's like I, how can I just part with that? How can I invest that? What if the share market crash? I lose all thirty thousand. You know, you like the kind of thing. Mm, so mm. I had that kind of uh, thinking when people ask me, "Hey, do you invest?" Oh, the one lah, because I want to safeguard my capital. So where mm. does someone start? All right, I I think coming to that question, right? I mean, there's there's that very simple answer that I can tell you. You know, nowadays there's so many fintech kind of stuff. You can just yeah. go to stash away, go to Versa, you know, whatnot, and then just click right. Even on your Maybank to you, you know, just use a what do you call that? Just apply for a fixed deposit that will help you, or either go and meet a unit trust agent or meet a planner, you know, whatnot. Uh, all those are very practical step, but the truth is, a lot of people are not doing it is because you're right. It's it's very emotional. Yes, it's it is very it is. very very emotional. You will see some people having a hobby where it is just looking at the money in their bank account growing, and it has to be somewhere that I can see. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, you're so right. It's like yeah, it's oh. just an enjoyment, right? And and I don't care whether am I losing money or not. I don't care whether it catch up with uh, inflation or not. What matters is every time I see increasing by a few thousand ringgit every month, I very happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's that. There's that triumphant feeling. So the truth is. People are emotional creatures, mm-hmm. and and honestly, I think one of the biggest role of a financial planner very often is to be your emotional counselor when it comes to money, <laughs> rather than really <laughs> telling you real knowledge. Because I mean, knowledge is cheap; you can find it anywhere online, right? Yeah. Uh, usually, it's as long as someone talks to you. Like for me, I myself, I've never engaged a financial counselor before a financial mm-hmm. planner personally, right? I've always just talked to my friends who are very successful, and mm-hmm. they taught me a lot of things from there. Uh, so having said that, right. The first thing that you have to understand is that don't love money. <laughs> oh. Don't fall in love with money. Right. Now, um, it's very hard to understand for someone, especially if they have not, they don't have business experience or they mm-hmm. have no investment background. Yeah. Let's put it this way, right? Like today, you run a business. Mm-hmm. You, like last time, uh, if I were to buy a MacBook or I have to buy a camera, right? I would think. Twice, I would think like one month, I would think three months, I would compare every single thing that I can compare, right? Only I make the decision to purchase. But today, when I run a business, if I want to buy a camera, anyone, my, my partner said, hey, we need three cameras. I just go, la, take the credit card, go. go. <laughs> you know very well that like, those tools are to are there to help you to generate More. returns. Mm. Yeah, right? yeah, that's correct. And the, the earlier you can start seeing money in that light, the faster you will start investing. Okay. But that switch, right? It's extremely difficult. Yeah. Because the way we acquire money very often is given. What do I mean mm-hmm. by given is that we are often told that if you were to do A, B, C by end of the month, I will give you X amount of salary. Yeah. And and that's how we we were born to be, right? Mm-hmm. That's how we were we are we are we are a condition in the society. And very often you see like people who are more business minded, they see it differently because they know that doing A, B, C, D may not get me X amount of money. Yep. It may get me more, it may get me less. And mm-hmm. I know that on top of CD, I do EF, I may get another two more zero at the back. Mm-hmm. So it is mm-hmm. that kind of mentality that will get you started. So I would say that like the first way to actually start investing is not to throw in your money. Mm-hmm. Because if you were to immediately, like for example, Ryan uh, or, or whoever, right? You, you, you have not started investing yet and, you are, mm-hmm. and, and right now you're looking at a lot of people making money and you're thinking to yourself, I don't want to lose out. The chances are the more you think that, the more you're going to lose money because <laughs> the next thing happens is that your friend is going to come to you and tell you that there's this funky investment that can give you some kind of return. You're going to drop in your money and then you see the return coming in looking quite good. Then you're going to add more, add more, add more and one day, kaput apparently is a money game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then you, you know what's after that? Investment is a lie. <laughs> then I stay. Then I completely stay away, and then that's it. That's the end of my investment journey. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Because because they are not looking at the right things. They are they are not looking at the first principle of it. Is which is to control emotions. Yes. To understand that money is a tool. Merely, it's a worker. Yeah. It, it's like your staff. That's all. Mm. Yeah. That that's all it is. When you can see it that way, 
then it's the right time to begin your investing journey. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's it's funny that you mentioned it that way because like I used to work for a company which is uh when I was working for Astro and then when you said that you had to make that switch to become very business minded and stuff like that and that's when I realized that I needed to spend in order to make the returns and uh that's why like, you know my my stuff at the new camera thing yeah bye bye, bye, bye. Yeah. <laughs> see we're making back the money Jin, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 but These but for tools. me it's like if I need, if I know that I could not make back the money, I would not buy it. It's not. I mean, like Correct. for me, I I mean, just so you know, right? You know, when I do, <laughs> yeah, that, la, I have to be yeah. sensible a bit, lah. <laughs> yeah. It's not an excuse to go shopping, ah. Huh? It's it's not like, <laughs> like hey, suka hati, I go buy. But like I, the thing is that that's that's understandable. If someone were to go through that route, uh, where becoming an employee and all of a sudden you are a business owner, and they, they would understand it. But what about those people that are? Comfortable uh, working for a nine to five job because they're basically climbing the corporate ladder. Yeah. Or yeah. or you know, where do they start? Because you know they they would probably be left out uh, in the sense of wait they will never or they they choose not to become entrepreneurial and 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 invest their time into building a business. So what what do people like them start with? And what you know besides fixed deposits? Okay. So uh, I would say that there are there are many excellent investors who are actually. Um, Employees, right? Uh, mm-hmm. And and the truth is, are those of you who are watching, if you're thinking that starting a business confirm means you're gonna earn more than an employee, you are wrong. Uh, you're gonna take more risk. Sometimes you may actually <laughs> work damn yeah. hard, and then you earn like lesser than your employees earn. You know, <laughs> for the longest ah. of time when we first started this, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, our pay is like lower than any of the employees that we brought in. Yeah. Oh, yes. This this that's how it is, right? In a business. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Now the the point I want to make is is that it is not so much of whether you are a, an employer employee there are some mm-hmm. employers who who also suck in investment yeah it is more about opening up your perspective i think yep. the first thing that you need to do whether or not you are employee or employer is actually to to read yeah i i think reading is actually a lost art yeah mm-hmm. uh i mean i always tell people this i i only started reading because one day a girl told me in university that a guy who reads is very sexy. So <laughs> I decided like, okay, I'm going to look sexy so I read, right? Yeah, but I got the habit of reading thanks to that sentence itself. Uh, okay. and, and that helped me a lot. So uh, reading is definitely one thing that helps. Now, and I think today, even if you don't want to pick up a book, go and listen to audiobooks is fine, right? There's mm. plenty of resources for audiobooks. I don't watch YouTube videos, right? As long as you learn about it, then that's where you want to begin. And the first thing you want to do right after that, something practical is to set aside a small amount first. Mm-hmm. Now, let's say you haven't invested in the stock market or Unitrust or whatnot. Just take out 1,000 ringgit, then place it there. Lah. Yeah, okay. just give it a try and tell yourself right. this. It is okay to even lose it. Okay. Yeah, and bec- because let's face it, how much of nonsense that you buy throughout the year that amount up to 1,000 ringgit? More actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. So you sacrifice yeah. your two sneakers, you know? Yeah, yeah. To, right, to yeah. test out something that could possibly make you enough money to buy twenty sneakers in the future. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. yeah that, that's that's what you can do, right? Yeah. Unless unless you're saying it's like some limited edition Yeezy, right? Tomorrow morning <laughs> the price is gonna go up. Then that's an investment. Ah, uh, that's a I different understand. different kind of buying, idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you're saying that you're just buying another NMD that looks nice. Then okay la, no la, You know, I think why not you try buying Adidas instead, <laughs> <laughs> buying the company instead, right? Yeah, the particular company that manufactures stuff for them, you know? Yeah. So um, just start with that and get accustomed to losing. But start by losing small. Okay. Mm. Yeah, start by losing small. Right. It's I, I think a lot of people have this idea that I'm going to learn about investing and I'm going to get so good at it so that one shot I can throw in 100,000. Okay. No. I think doesn't work most, that way, lah. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. I, <laughs> and I think that's the most most stupidest thing that anyone can do. Yeah, if I'm allowed to say that. Um, yeah. Okay. Definitely, I'm talking about the skill of one hundred thousand here is a big money, lah. I know for yes. some people, hundred thousand is a small amount. Of money. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's a different story for those people. To, to us, yeah. normal normal people, lah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, to, to us, normal people, lah. La. Don't talk yeah. about the billionaires, uh, uh. <laughs> So we just put aside a little bit. You know, then it it's okay even if we lost kind of like mentality. Why? Because put it this way. If you will never make a purchasing or investing decision with 50 ringgit, huh? mm-hmm. do you think you dare to put in 50,000 into the investment? Mm. Mm. If you don't dare put in 50,000, do you think you dare to put in 5 million? Right. You, you will never dare. So oh. it's, it's always a step-by-step process. 
Yeah. Okay. I mean, people like Warren Buffett or people, all those famous investors that you see, they, they didn't just come out of the mountain suddenly or come out of their, their hole and then, whoa, I'm going to invest 10 million, you know? It, <laughs> it's, it's been a live practice that they slowly invest a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's something that we have to learn. So be, be very open. Like, I, I'm, I'm super open uh, to a point uh, that even if I know it's money game, uh, I can put in 100 USD in because whoa. I just want to see how it works. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Like for those who but, do not but for understand, me, that hundred ringgit is something that can can be spare, lah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, 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 so it's for it's those a comfortable amount, like an amount you're comfortable not getting back, lah. You know. Yeah. Is you're willing to spend that to see where the market trend is going, or like yeah, whether this thing will content pay content research, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the adsense, adsense will make back the hundred the hundred ringgit. <laughs> but okay, for 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 those who who are listening, for the benefit of those listening, right? What what do you mean by money game gambling? Is it? Mm, okay, money game. <clears throat> is actually a scam. So right. these days, it is uh, very popular that... Uh, so money game is just a, is a general word for scam. Uh. So right. how it works is that, let's say today I tell you that I have an investment and my investment is I invest in cups. Okay? Right. So these are exclusive cups, you know, and I have a... I, either I tell you that there's a trader or something like that. Either way, like, I'm just telling you that I'm investing in cups and then we are going to do something to make sure that it appreciates in value. Mm-hmm. So I say that right now, hey, Jin, you want to invest or not? You just put in one thousand USD lah. Then yep. you buy this cup. But then uh, there's a lock in period of six months first lah. Right. Uh, but every month I will give you back maybe two percent or three percent or five percent. Mm-hmm. So for you, you know, you're a bit skeptical. So maybe you put in right. Yeah. Then I tell you the next thing. Hey, by the way, you want to recover money faster or not? You get Ryan uh. When you get Ryan, right? You mm. get a commission also every month. Oh. There we go. Uh, then you thought then after three months, right? You're making money. Di. Then you thought to yourself, hey, why not introduce Ryan? Right. Uh, then you right. start doing that. And eventually, right, the number grow bigger and bigger and you're making so much of money out of it. Yep. And one day, me, the product owner, yep. Cause I what I've been doing is I'm just collecting money from everyone and redistributing it. Yeah. Mm. So I collect from ten jeans, I distribute to the next Ryan, and mm-hmm. I distribute to the next group of yeah. people. Now this game will end eventually. And because uh. there's not gonna be enough people to support the thing. So right. traditionally these are called uh, Ponzi scheme. Yeah. These days, people are super creative. They they mash up the different kind of uh, MLMs and uh, pyramid scheme and Ponzi scheme together, make their own scheme. And the easy word to call it today is called money game. Money game, game uh. is yeah. the new is the new pyramid scheme. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's right. Yeah. Evolve already. That's there was right. this. Uh, there was this. Uh, uh, I, I don't know whether it's a po- uh, is it labeled a Ponzi or is it MLM but you know Lamberger at one point of time that those uh, freaking <laughs> uh, oil lamps and j- that's a, that, would that be counted as a money game? Ah, that, that's more towards an MLM uh. MLM yeah. uh, okay, that's okay, more towards okay. an MLM uh. so one, yeah. one trick that MLM does this very well is also uh, I bought this hat from Taobao 10 bucks right Yeah. Yep. <coughs> I just tell you that look by wearing it you get some health benefit prevent you from getting cancer. <laughs> so it's 100 USD. So you oh buy 10, my. you buy 10, you sell to your friend, you get 50% commission. Uh. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my right? God. I, I, yeah. I have, I've had yeah. some friends who sold that. Uh, I'm not sure whether you heard about it where you wear these pants of tight, tight leggings and you lose weight. <laughs> oh, have you heard yeah, of yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so those, are, those are MLM, uh, but definitely sometimes their product is quite good. Yeah, right, okay. I have to acknowledge that sometimes their product is quite good mm. but how do they pay you so much is through this overpriced mechanism okay. yeah. so okay. uh, in, in fact in fact I was like uh, I was even invited to be a part of these kind of things to start their scheme from, for people Yeah, and I helped them to calculate a bit and that was when my eyes really opened them big man like mm. whoa <laughs> 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 like, like whoa now I know why you guys never leave the industry once you are in the top positions? Like, wow. like, wow. The like money the just keeps of money. Because it's oh, pouring yeah. in like a waterfall. See, I, I'm no joke. Seriously, it is literally like this thing that mm-hmm. is like 10 ringgit and all I need to do is package it super nice mm-hmm. and I tell you it's worth 100 USD. Right, right. And then I just tell you guys to help me sell it, you know, and you guys earn a commission from it and, and that's how it trickles down. But this is not illegal. Because yeah. of a willing buyer, willing seller situation. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. It's Loopholes. completely legal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's not investment. So don't, I mean, okay. Don't, I feel like don't. some people, they would get into these things. La. You know, people who really got a lot of contact or really know how to sell. Mm. But like, I think like what you're trying to say is it's not for everyone. La. Yeah, it, yeah, it's not. 
But but here's another question though. Investment. People always think that when they invest, they are very impatient. Don't you think so? Because of people like for example, like you say one person puts in fifty thousand ringgit, they are hoping to make twenty percent in the first month. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. In yeah. Fact, one of the most common questions that I get on our uh, social media page is, after people invested in certain platforms, yeah, then they would message us in like a few months. Then they'll tell us like, "Hey, you know, I'm I'm losing like two to three percent. It's worse than my FD or something like that." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I'm like, "Oh yeah, don't worry. If it comforts you, the first six months I invested in it, I was also losing money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's just how it works. Right? Like, six months? I, I yeah. thought I'm going to make my money back in like two months. What are you yeah, talking yeah. about six months? <laughs> so, because, so it doesn't be, work like that. Yeah. yeah. And because investments just go up and down. And, and I think one thing that makes Malaysian have a very, very unrealistic expectation of investment is in fact, the fact that we have ASB and EPF all this. Ah, okay. Mm. Like really, one. I'm. I'm not kidding. Like, if if you look at US, uh, they don't have EPF. One. They have four hundred one k, right? And four hundred one k, there's no capital guarantee. You know, it's okay. they mm. take your money. You you can choose to invest in stocks through that. And if the stock lose money, you lose money, lah. Right. That's all, lah. Okay. Mm. You okay. invest in a fund, lose money, lose money. That's all. Malaysia, uh, we are so protective of our investor. Almost everything got capital guarantee. And last time, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So like EPF capital guarantee. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's ASB. Also capital guarantee, and then at one point our FD was like eight percent, twelve percent. So people have this expectation that I can get eight percent to twelve percent without having any capital risk, mm-hmm. and that is called a normal investment. Ah, oh, I see. But actually, we are quite privileged to have that lah last time. Yes. actually, it's super super lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Cause, yeah, cause generally, right? A uh, uh, a normal stock market performance. Should be at about like eight percent, seven to eight percent a year, and, yeah. and that is with capital risk, and that's yeah. the average, right? And if you can make fifteen percent a year, you are damn good in trading, right? You're damn yeah. good in investing, already considered. Yeah. Imagine you go to Wall Street and tell them I can give you capital guarantee. They all come and flock to you. Really. Yes, <laughs> that's right. So, so that that exclusivity of something the Malaysian government has been doing for the people has kind of. Made Malaysians have a very impractical idea of it, so therefore people are all the more willing to fall for money game, you know, Ponzi scheme. Because what else can give you so-called capital return and this kind of return? A lie, lah. Mm. <laughs> they, so they basically set a benchmark for themselves. They have basically received a benchmark of that high return. So they, they, you know, anything higher than that is like, oh, only then I'll invest in that. That kind of thing. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Everything boils down to, to emotional uh, at the end of the day. It's emotional. It is emotional greed. I would like to call it. And and whatever you just mentioned so is really true. Like, you know, you invest a bit. It's like, wow, going up. Then you put more, then you go down. Like, oh my God, I'm going (laughs) to die. But okay. So there, you, you mentioned trading. Now, now there is a difference between investing and also trading, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Like, yep. Yeah. yeah. So, so okay. What is an example of investing, and what is an example of trading? Investing is, it's kind of like, um, if you were to put it like farming, right? You want to plant yep. a durian tree, mm-hmm. that is investing. So, right. you know, tomorrow you plant plant a durian seed, you're not gonna see anything for the next like half a year, right? Mm-hmm. And you're only gonna see, <laughs> see, uh, you're only gonna see fruits like maybe three years to five years down the road, and even with that, your first batch of fruit suck. Right. Okay. So, mm-hmm. uh, but after ten years, it's gonna give you damn good return, right? Mm, that that's right. the idea of uh, investing. But when it comes to uh, trading, or we call it speculation, yeah, it is a very fast game. Everyone got their different style. Some can be one week, two weeks. Some can be one month. Some can be half a year. Uh, it all depends on yourself. It can be one hour. But the point is, you are trying to predict supply and demand. Oh. It's the idea is like investing in sneakers, right? right. You know, mm. you know those people who went line up right in front during the, the, the day that is launched, and then straight away, at one they turn back, they sell to another guy. Yeah, yeah. That's the idea of speculation. Mm. Mm-hmm. I see. So trading so, okay. would be more something like you know, I buy in gold and then I hold on to that gold, appreciate in twenty years. That's sorry, that's investing lah. That's investing. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Trading yeah. is like okay, stock market low today, buy next week. Oh, go up ready price, sell straight away. Correct. So imagine, right? You you see the new Yeezy launching, then you think to yourself, okay, I may not have a buyer right now, but I think I can get it, wear it for one day and sell it. Then you <laughs> take it. Then uh, so you think like, you know, at least I can wear it for one day, right? So you can buy it. Then mana right? Tomorrow 
suddenly no one want to buy the Yeezy because somehow there's bad news or something like that. Then yeah. Gone case. Now that Yeezy is stuck with you, you got to wear it. It's a loss right. in your account already. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. So here's here's another question I want to ask you because like you know a lot of people again just now like we were mentioning in the beginning of the uh, this conversation it's like there are two types of people the type of people that you know uh, don't even have enough money to basically put aside uh, to invest because you know they are they have things to pay off and then you have the other type of person but okay going back to that person who I would say let's just let's just paint this scenario you have this person who earns about let's say three thousand five to four thousand dollars a month. Can they? Is there a strategy? Okay, let's just assume that they're gonna be earning about four thousand ringgit for the rest of their career. Okay, right. don't know what job they're doing, but you know, if they if anybody pays you that amount for the rest of your career, please leave that person. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right, because <laughs> I'm pretty sure you know you gotta progress. Let's just assume that someone earns about four thousand uh, a month. Okay, then you know what? Let's just 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 make it a little bit better. Uh, three thousand a month. Okay, can someone invest and make? Their money and assets grow to something like a million, a half a million, or a million. Obviously, not instantly, but in in a progress of maybe twenty, thirty years. Yeah, what yeah, does one definitely, what, definitely? What does one What does one need to do in order to you know be able to achieve something like that? This is the time to take out a calculator financial calculator. Already. A financial <laughs> calculator. Oh, let me calculator. Let me give you. Let me give you uh, uh, so my there's calculator. this concept called time value money, uh, mm. where what happens is that you calculate, you know. Money is value in relevant to time, right? So we right. know that money in the past is better than uh, money today is better than money tomorrow. That's the whole idea. So assuming mm-hmm. if you want to save up a million ringgit, right? Yeah. So let's yep. just put a million ringgit here, and then uh, let's say we just take a young fella lah, uh, say thirty years old right now lah, right? So until sixty, by the time you retire, and let's say you invest into something that gives you about seven percent return a year. Yes. Yeah, that's a that's fair. You know, just a normal okay. normal kind of return, right? And currently, you have nothing. So every year, you will need to save ten thousand five hundred eighty six ringgit. Okay. So ten thousand a year. That is about. You see, I told you my maths is bad. <laughs> <laughs> One. So you you don't need to be good in maths, by the way. <laughs> okay. So yeah, yeah. It's eight hundred eighty three ringgit a yeah. month. So. Yeah, eight hundred eighty-three yeah. ringgit uh, a month. Yeah, so okay. if you can save that money regularly every month, then you can be a millionaire, right? And on top of that, you are being paid EPF and everything all. So your EPF yep. all those will add up together to maybe close to around seven hundred to eight hundred thousand somewhere around mm-hmm. there. Yeah, so you okay. you still have about two million. But then the okay. question is, it depends on where you are from, right? So right. if you are living in KL and you go party every weekend. I'm yeah. pretty sure that you can't save up 800. 800 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If if you're earning 4k and unless your wife or your spouse, you know, is very rich and you mm-hmm. don't have to pay a single dollar, then I also don't think you can save 800 and get, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So if you're a single fella mm-hmm. and your parents take care of most of the things, right? You just need to take care of yourself. I think 800 and get is very doable. Okay. Yeah. It's it's okay. very doable. In fact, you can probably even save up to two thousand ringgit for some of them who don't spend a lot of money, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've seen some of my friends being able to save seventy percent of their income, especially oh. if they don't have to pay for any bills, right? Yeah. So it depends. Don't on don't they not cut down on the well. cut down on the grab food? You know, cut down on the food pandas and all because yeah. you know they're pretty expensive. You know what I mean? You know, it's like five bucks on top of your delivery and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, so you know about it, you know put aside it. So. Is that like okay? So I've read. Uh, are there any strategies for someone to take that? Okay, so um, assume that someone puts aside eight hundred dollars to save every month. Mm-hmm. What do they invest in? That people be like, okay. I go, what do I invest in now? Uh? Do I do my own? Do I uh, uh, you know try to look for stocks and put it into any stocks? What does one? What are the main fundamentals each individual must understand before they put their eight hundred bucks into something? Okay, the first thing that they need to understand is this: before you even set aside the money for investment, you make sure you have an emergency fund first. Right. Okay. Mm. Because that's going to burn your burn a hole in your pocket immediately if there's any emergency. So usually we we recommend people have at least like um three months of okay. emergency saving if you can. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we understand that you know in real life is a little bit like you may do four hundred, four hundred, until you get the amount, then full eight hundred into investment. Right. Mm. Yeah. And and with. With eight hundred a month, it's gonna be kind of hard for you to really go into like stocks or whatnot immediately. Yes. Yeah, it's gonna be difficult. But it's good to use that period to learn. 
yeah, to learn, right? So maybe after two months of saving, if you're really into stock, you have 2,000, then start investing in the stock market just to get used to it, right? Right. <clears throat> right. Then the next thing you need to do is accumulate bullets. Uh, mm-hmm. Or for other people who don't want to invest in stock or cryptocurrency or whatnot immediately, right? You, you can just start by focusing on accumulating bullets. So okay. how to accumulate bullets? There are a few ways. It depends on your time horizon. Yeah, what kind of goal you want. That's why it's it's very, very planning kind of thing. And if you really yeah. want to do it, you sit down, you tell yourself, okay, in two years time, I'm gonna have, uh, twenty thousand to invest. Right. Yeah. Uh, then you set your goal there. In that two years, just don't invest. Just chill with your money. And yep. what you can do is that you can put it either into a money market fund. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which you can uh, do it very easily through a lot of fintech platform these days. Uh, mm. I, stash is simple, Versa, you know, all of them offer the same thing. So right, okay, when you say when you market. say uh, money market funds, mm. what is a money market fund? Can you please explain? Okay, mm. money market fund is like FD. Okay. The only difference between the money market fund and the FD is actually okay. I, I don't go into too specific technicalities. Yeah. But generally, how it affects you is that uh, money market fund you can withdraw it anytime. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, and you get a prorated interest. Okay. But when it comes to FD, you need to finish your period there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's it's stuck there, there for that yeah. set amount of period. That's right. right. That's right. So yeah. um, then the other way that you can look at it, if you have like maybe two years at least, then you can actually look at dollar cost averaging every month yep. into like either an ETF or either a unit trust fund that you think is performing well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And do remember this, anyone, because the chances are at the moment you come out and invest the first three kind of investment that you get in touch with. Number one is insurance guy coming and tell you that this is the best investment plan. <laughs> Number two yeah. is, a, is a unit trust guy telling you that my unit trust is very good, right? Yep. Yeah. And then number three is actually the online platforms, uh, right? Yep. Mm. So online platforms usually are the most transparent. Uh, the first two, please understand that uh, not everything is equal. Yeah. Yep. You need to know what you're putting your money into. Mm-hmm. So if you have two years, you can maybe accumulate your money in these kind of things. Yeah, then maybe after two years, on top of your 20,000 saved up, you still have another few hundred ringgit extra from interest that's being paid off or the returns from those investments, right? Mm -hmm. And then two years later, then you start investing. Yeah, that is, that's just how it is because you don't have a huge capital, so you just have to be patient. The the, the most difficult thing is when you save 5,000, you reward yourself with something else that's worth 5,000, like maybe a guitar or whatnot, <laughs> 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 then you're going to start all over again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of people tend to be very impatient. Um, I Okay, so it, it took me until I was like 32 years old to realize this. When I was 33 and I just, I told myself one day to my wife, like, you know what? I wish I had this habit of saving when I was, when I first came out to work. Why did I first have to go and buy a Honda car? Just because, you know, well, my Honda car got my got me my wife. <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say, no, I'm not trying to say that the car got her, but you know, one day, one day, you know, I, I fetch her back in my nice little Honda City, lah, huh? that my mom helped me pay down payment for, you know what I mean, whatever. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there are, there are a lot of things that, that uh, if, no, I'm not, I don't come from a rich background, so there are a lot of things that I could have just stinged on and not splashed on and put that money and be able to grow it 10 years later. Uh, and, and the thing is, a lot of people tend to think that, oh, I don't have time, I don't have time. The truth is, the funny truth is, uh, only th- I only came to realize this, when it comes to money, we, should ha- we always have time. We are always accumulating money. And, yeah. uh, and the only problem with what I had was, every time I grew older, okay, my spending habits changed. And that is the biggest enemy to every individual. Because mm. what today you'll say that oh I'm gonna save money, boom Yeezys, wow oh, them nice lah. <laughs> Should I buy a? Uh, you know, <laughs> then you buy it, you buy it already. It's like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna save money tomorrow. Then after boom, you know, suddenly and something else comes out. It's like oh shit, I should I buy. You are your own worst enemy when it comes to saving. And and for me it's I I, I like yeah, again like, If I want to talk to my younger self, it's like hey, buy Dodge Coin. I'm kidding. No 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 Dodge Coin. <laughs> 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 no 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 no. no. But yeah, I, I, I feel I feel that investment I, I feel everybody like you just mentioned dollar cost averaging, which uh I kinda learned about a lot I learned about it uh quite a while ago and I applied it. Mm. And I think that it is can I say it's a fail safe strategy? Okay, is it a fail yeah. fail safe strategy? Yeah. It yeah. is, right? Yeah. So it is. Just for our listeners uh who are listening in and wondering what dollar cost averaging is, it's like at every given point of time you would basically buy the same amount of 
can be anything. It can be stocks, it can be crypto, it can be shares or, or whatever not. At every given point in time, no matter at what price. So mm. at the end of every day, you know, you will probably average out your buy-in price. And then when it goes up above that, boom, you're making money. Correct. Am yeah. I correct? That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I, I do that for my cryptocurrencies as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't invest one shot when it comes to my cryptocurrencies. I think especially when it comes to higher risk assets. Yes. And you believe that it has a good fundamental value, then uh, it's a very, very good approach. You know, you can even dollar cost averaging on stocks. Right? Yeah. 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 Even stocks. Yeah. yeah. Wait, I, I dollar cost average my stocks as well. I, I'm yeah. a bit lost. What What do you mean? Like, so throughout the day, the the stocks will be at different different price, right? So you no, just yeah, calculate yes. the average price of that whole day, is it? No, 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 no. Right. No. Okay. Let's say for example, let's talk about stocks of uh, Mr. Money TV. All right. Ah, okay. On Monday is at ten bucks. All right. Yeah. Then on Tuesday is at nine bucks. Uh huh. Okay. Let's just not let's not do daily lah. Let's just do weekly. Monthly, okay. Yeah. Weekly. Okay. Week uh-huh. one is at ten bucks. Week two is at five bucks. Then week three is at two bucks, right? Yeah. If you're the person sitting on the side like, oh, when should I go in? When should I go in? When should I go in? And you went in at 10, you put in all of your stash at 10 bucks, right? You put in your, your capital. Let's say you had 2,000 bucks to, to invest. I only have 2,000 bucks to invest, all right? You put in all at 10 bucks and then week two, week three is, is at $1. He's like, oh my God, I'm losing like 90% of my, my freaking whatever. But what if you basically spread it out? All right, week one, I put 100 bucks at $10. Week two, I put a hundred bucks at nine dollars. Week three, oh, it went down to five. I put a hundred bucks at five dollars. Should I put in more at five dollars because it's cheaper than what I bought it for at ten? You're bringing down your average buy-in cost, and mm. because your stock hits ten, there is a possibility. There's no guarantee. There is a possibility yeah. that the the stock price might go back up to ten. So when it goes back up to ten, you bring your average, your your low average. You you basically go above your average, and then you're making money there. So you kind of diversify. Like the buy in price, lah. You're not buying yes. in at ten bucks. Your, you're, you're yes. buying in some at ten, some at five, some at two. Yes. Yeah, so sure, when yeah. the average, you, like, so the average of your buy in will probably be about oh my god, again math. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean like you know, yeah. by three, like six yeah. something, lah. Yeah. You know, That's yeah. Right. Yeah, oh, I, came okay. ac- I, came, I came across this video of this lady, uh, she's an Asian lady in the States who talked about dollar cost averaging. averaging. She said that if you put in 100 USD dollar cost averaging to a particular stock, even if it's like um, the S&P 500 for like, like over like 20 years, right? You could even make a million bucks. Yeah. 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 That's, and that's 100 USD. I'm not, sure, okay, but I'm not sure if she did it weekly or monthly. I, I can't remember about that. Maybe weekly. Maybe weekly. So you see, uh, dollar cost like that's dollar cost averaging is uh is 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 some sort of strategy that I I, I managed to so learn. I'm so glad I does I, that I, I, does that apply when you sell like when you when you wanna sell your stocks as well? So you sell it at one price and then you sell it at another price. Or only or it only works with when you're buying in the stocks. Hmm. It works on both ways. Both yeah. ways, yeah. Uh. Mm. Both yeah. Ways. yeah. Because let's say for example, if you your average price buy in is like like uh eight, right? Then you went up to ten. You sell all at ten. Then after that, no more already. Then after it went up to 15. Allah! Yeah, I should have sold right. more. Uh, okay, I should okay. have. I should, yeah. well, you know, I, if I sell at 15, I would have made more. Yeah, so yeah, you, sell, yeah. you sell like 10% of your shares. And if it goes up to $11, sell another 10% of your shares. If it goes up to like $13, sell another 20% of your share. Until you sell Allah. So, you know, you get more. So, so it's just... This is quite good for those people who always like for more, you know? Like, oh, yeah, I, I should have bought here, lah, but then they wait and then it goes up and they're like, oh man, I, I should have bought the, the week before and everything like that. But, yeah. but you yeah. know, I feel like DCA, right, is just like how someone is trying to lose weight. It's very tough. <laughs> <one>. <laughs> Serious. It's like on your first day, on your first day, right, you eat salad. Serious, you eat salad. Then Pokemon, somebody comes in with a buddy plate of steak. It's like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh, I cannot tahan. La. I cannot tahan. Then you eat the steak. You know what I mean? You go all in. <laughs> And then after that, never mind, I'll try again tomorrow. It, it, it's like that. You, 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 let's say if it, it happens when you buy a piece of stock, all right? And then so all of a sudden, the stock goes higher price. Like, oh yeah, damn it. I better buy now because it looks like it's going higher. Mm. So mm. you need to be very disciplined. Uh, you need to be very, yeah, I think, I think investing lah, to sum everything up or what we've discussed here today, I think investing takes a lot of discipline and also a lot of uh, emotional control. Am I correct to say that, Peter? Yeah, yeah. There's a, in fact, there's a saying in the, in the street that goes, investing is supposed to be boring. If it's exciting, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. 
<laughs> it's supposed to be steady. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, here's yeah. another question for you because I'm pretty sure a lot of people are talking about this. What do you think of cryptocurrency and, and where we're heading to right now? Because like, rewind to 2017, everybody thought it was a freaking Ponzi scheme. Everybody thought yep. it's a scam. Yep. But so many institutions are buying into it. All right. What, what are your thoughts about it? All right. Uh, I think when it comes to cryptocurrency, there's, um, there's two schools of thought. Yeah, yep. definitely there are, there are some who are very traditional and they don't believe in it at all. Yeah, uh, there's another school of thought where they, where, they, where they really believe that eventually it will be like the thing. And, and we see lately, especially I think last year, a lot of people say that, are saying that eventually cryptocurrency will take over the fiat currency, you know, there'll yep. be no more ringgit, there'll be no more USD, you know, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, I'm standing right in the middle. Mm-hmm. I don't think that cryptocurrency will take over fiat currency. Yep. I mean, for one reason, I think unless everyone becomes like everyone suddenly become a saint and they're willing <laughs> to dispose of their power, you know, and, you know oh, mm-hmm. okay, can. Yeah. Because yep. money is a lot more about political power rather than just the value that it holds. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. And because of that, I, I have very little doubt because I just don't have that kind of faith in overall humanity that everyone is kind. Right. <laughs> 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 so on the other hand, I don't think it's a complete sham, although there are some coins that are really a scam. Yeah, like yeah. a freaking coin has called himself Shih Tzu coin. <laughs> <laughs> Serious, yeah. like there's a freaking Shih Tzu coin and there's a, there's a, there's a Shiba Inu coin. Yes. And there's even a, 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 a coin that calls himself Balls. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, you yes. can get you 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 can go and register a coin called Kuku Chow also, can I? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just need to go and like you know register it and stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and but one thing about cryptocurrency is that it is, it is extremely complicated. I bet until today, even many people who are investing in it don't really understand how it actually actually works. Mm-hmm. I mean, until today, you don't see me talk a lot about cryptocurrency in my videos. Reason being is because. I still don't think I'm at that level where I can really, really, really talk about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So even though I can have a conversation with people and stuff like that, but then sometimes I still think like, actually there are still things that you also don't know. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and that's why I, I'm a bit like hesitant, uh, but definitely we'll be covering more because more and more people are, are like not asking a question. But my thoughts about it is this, there are certain coins that are really going to do well. For example, Bitcoin. Right. Yeah. Uh, why I think Bitcoin does have a fundamental value because number one, it it has uh, it has a limited supply, so it is very similar to gold, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. humans are novel creature. We are mm-hmm. familiar. We, we we like things that we are familiar with, and when you tell me that Bitcoin is similar to gold, immediately you have a concept drawn, mm-hmm. so it becomes something easy to understand. When more people yeah. can understand it, more people are willing to invest in it. Naturally, when more people are willing to invest in it, the price will go up. Yeah. Right? And we are seeing that happening with more institutional investing in it and so on. Yep. Number two, there's uh, Ethereum where uh, it is like considered as the silver in the market. Mm-hmm. Right? They consider that as a digital silver. And it works because it has this programming being written on top and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, However, when you are to judge cryptocurrency, you have to look each of it one by one. You can't go and say like, cryptocurrency is good or then anyone tell you any coin, you just put your money in, confirm <laughs> die. Because yeah. cryptocurrency is the easiest to make a scam out of it also. Yeah. Like, you, you know, remember the Ponzi scheme that we talked about? Yeah. yeah. There are a million and one cryptocurrency scams. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> it's a freaking a lot of it. Uh, yeah. like, this, this time around is a lot. It's like crazy yes. a lot. And Super it's crazy like, like how like, uh, I remember at one point like Elon Musk just just tweeted something about like Doge and then suddenly the price shot up and then like after that it just went all the way back down and people lost like a shit ton of money. That's it's yeah. so volatile. It's like, there's no, it's, it's, there's no like real basis for that. I yeah. feel, I feel, yeah. kinda, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of 50, no, I'm, I'm not even 50-50 on Dogecoin. I, I feel like Dogecoin is like a, a joke because like, yeah. it's a coin where, where, where billionaires would just use to manipulate. You know what I mean? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I, yeah, I remember like everybody was talking about uh, how Elon Musk controls the market. Do you think so, Peter? I don't, I, maybe he influences, but I don't think so. Because if one person like him can control the market, then this, this whole entire thing is a complete sham. Um, okay, so there's, 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 there's uh, two, 
theories here lah that mm-hmm. that so far that I've I've known so far. Okay, now number one thing you have to understand about Bitcoin is that no one knows who holds Bitcoin, right? Yeah, because mm-hmm. complete mm-hmm. anonymity. So whoever that's controlling at the back, you really do not know. Yeah. Now there was a study that was done that was shown that like uh, most of the people who apparently a huge amount of transaction of Bitcoin that was made that led to the last price fluctuation was done all by one particular account. Oof. Yeah. Okay. So they were saying that you know that 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 shows that it's being manipulated, right? Yeah. Yep. Now uh, on the other hand, there's also now a lot more data that's showing that uh, institutionals are the one that are holding m- the largest amount of uh, cryptocurrency in the market. Yeah. No. Definitely, one thing we know for sure is that the crowd that holds Bitcoin, especially the retail investor, mm-hmm. tend to be younger people. Yeah. Ah. Uh, because you you just believe in technology lah. Not many older people. Yeah, mm. and it's very same quality as the tech stock. You know, the yeah. people you mm. see tech stock go up, but uh, you see Bitcoin. You know, those, those tend to go up. Uh. <laughs> 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 I say any lah. No, not true. Uh, not true. Not statistically proven. Uh, so yeah. don't quote me on that. Uh. Okay. Yeah. But the point is that it's very high likely that they are the same group of people. And yeah. having said that, right, you are talking about a bunch of young people who are opportunistic to make money. So what do you think? Will happen when someone tweets something bad and they see some sort of bad news. Mm-hmm. No, the reason why, uh, if you talk about three to five years ago in Malaysian stock market, it was extremely boring. Right? because there's not many retail investor and most of the people are institution, yep. so the stock don't move and yep. stay mm-hmm. there because no volume, no yep. transaction, right? So now, so this brings us to another thing. When we talk about cryptocurrency, right? If you want to figure out what's the price of cryptocurrency, ah. Uh, the general theory that makes the most sense uh, is the velocity of money, mm-hmm. which is how much the money is being transacted. Yeah. But I don't know how to calculate that using intrinsic value and get a value of it. Lah. It's a little bit too high level for me. Lah, huh? <laughs> <But> <laughs> general theory is the money velocity is the one that determines the value of Bitcoin. And because right now, if you look at uh, Bitcoin and ETH, all these, they have a very constant flow of transaction that keeps going regardless of the price is up or down. Right. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and and that's the basis of currency, right? Okay. In in a way, lah, not part of the basis of currency is is the constant change of hands. But you also have to remember the next thing. As as this velocity increases, the price is supposed to go more stable eventually. Yeah. 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 Do you right? think the reason why it's so volatile right now is because it's still in in its infancy, despite the fact that it's been around for ten years? Yes, certainly it is. I mean, I I mean I'm in the camp of Katie Wood, lah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, Katie is one of the just for those of you who do not know, she's actually a they call her a super investor in a, in the US. She manages a fund called Arc Invest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So her theory about Bitcoin uh, that she has talked about so far and the research that she has proposed is the idea that cryptocurrency, especially something like Bitcoin, and she specifically used the word Bitcoin most of the time. Yeah. Is that it is not a correlated asset with other asset classes. What does it mean is that when other assets go up and down, yep. Bitcoin tend to have its own pattern of movement rather than have a following. So right. it makes it a very good diversifying tool. Okay. Now, one of the things that will cause a huge take-up rate in the market is if Bitcoin is being acknowledged as an asset class in itself, that's mm-hmm. number one, and then uh, more institutional will use it as a hedging tool, which mm-hmm. means they diversify their investment into it to prevent uh, losses and you know mm-hmm. that, that kind of thing, like hedging, like another concept altogether. Mm-hmm. Now, if that happens, then the take-up rate is going higher, then the price will continue increasing. Then right. on the other hand also, the idea that there are certain countries with very, very weak currency will be easier for them to just implement uh, using Bitcoin, Bitcoin as a as a currency exchange tool mm-hmm. rather than um, you know setting up another new currency la. yeah yeah and could do it Bitcoin I mean uh, yeah we, we there's some country El Salvador is already using Bitcoin as legal tender in their country wow and a few others are also following suit so yeah yep. think of it I mean in layman terms uh, because sometimes it can get so technical uh, Bitcoin is basically digital gold and just like gold at one point of time when people just discovered gold and put it in the stock market I'm pretty sure that the price fluctuated like mad and mm, until mm, it reached mm. a stable point of like 1,007 USD right now, it's now very stable. So it's basically used. So it, technically the concept is you go to, uh, uh, you take your goal, you go to, uh, was it, is it a bank or I can't remember, a reserve. 
you give them your gold in exchange for fiat money. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you, the past it was like that. So that your fiat money is basically legal tender uh, in exchange for the amount of gold. Gold. Mm. Yeah, then once you have the balance of, you, you can use your money to trade and whatever not in the market, blah, 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 blah. Then you can take back your money and go back and buy back your gold. So that's the concept. Am I correct? That's right. That's right. And, mm-hmm. and now it's developing even further with DeFi. I think all yeah. of you have probably heard of that, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if, if you talk about DeFi, the whole idea is that, you know, last time we only talked about um, Bitcoin as an asset class in itself, right? Yeah. yeah. So, but the concept is Bitcoin and all these coins are supposed to be money. Ma. Yeah. So money is supposed to have a bank, right? Yes. Yeah. So this is where DeFi comes in, decentralized mm-hmm. finance. And so nowadays you'll see stuff like Cake DeFi, who does staking, liquidity pool mining, and they're offering crazy returns yep. to attract you to to be part of that thing. Yep. Right? Like I think the APY, which is their interest yearly, can can go up to about like what twenty percent? Some even two hundred percent, which sounds yes. absurd. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, but I think Ryan, if you're a bit lost, DeFi is decentralized yeah. finance. <laughs> I, I mean, I he's heard, completely heard this lost. Term before, but like yeah. I haven't really like. Went so imagine. Down that okay. Hole yet. So imagine this: banks make money from your money. Yeah, yeah. They invest. They take the money. They put in. They give it out as stuff. loans. They yeah, give it yeah. out as uh, whatever not, and they charge interest to people. Interest. And they, they give you the difference. They give you a, 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 an incentive. Mm-hmm. Decentralized finance takes away the middleman. You are your own bank. You get it? So Ethereum is a system where it basically evolves around smart contracts, where if you loan your Ethereum out to someone, they have to basically have a bit of collateral of asset in order to take that loan from you. And if they don't pay back, you get whatever they have Ah. basically put into collateral. So in other words, this is supposed to be a fail-safe way of how we're supposed to take loans. Whereas banks, you know, you leverage banks, you, you, you basically, oh, my, my income is 3500 a month. Okay, now you can take a $300,000 loan. Whereas decentralized finance, you can take a loan based on what you can afford to lose. So you get for it? example, like if the bank gives out a loan and then the person cannot pay back the loan, then the bank sees the house. Even though the bank used my money, I don't see any piece of that house. Yeah. But now with decentralized finance, for example, uh, if the guy takes a loan and he cannot pay back, I get that piece of that house, that kind yes. of thing. Yes. Ah, yes. That's right. I want that piece that's of that right. house. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. You don't just take my money and run away. So that's oh. why that's that's why it's very exciting times for underdeveloped nations where where everyone can be their own bank and, 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 yeah. and yeah. But the thing is with that being said, I'm pretty sure that the big the big guns, the big guns, the gods. Oh yeah. <laughs> will also mm. want a piece of mm. that cake and that's where you see them coming in and regulating a lot of things. Now. But you know what? I think I think you know we're gonna cap it there. And there for today's discussion. We can be talking we, for like another four more hours. We can talk for another four more hours. But Peter, uh, I wanna, I know I wanna talk with you more and probably go more in depth in into other talks of money in future. But before we go, do you wanna uh, say anything to our listeners who are listening and our watchers, our viewers who are watching, watchers who are watching? <laughs> sorry, sorry. All right. So uh, I think. I think just remember one thing is that investing is not that complicated. I think emotions are complicated. Once you can sort out your emotions, investing becomes much more easier. Yeah, it becomes much more easier. Yes, it feels like this. it's very complicated, but mm-hmm. it is actually not. I think there are just not many good financial teachers around. La. I'll, I'll, I'll have to acknowledge that. La. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, just it sort out your f- sort out emotion because that one I can't help you. <laughs> 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 yeah, I can only help you with with the knowledge part. So yeah, that's just how it goes. Everything yes. else, go watch Mr. Money TV. That's right. <laughs> it's so easy to search it. Go on YouTube, search for Mr. Mr. Money, Money TV, TV, and that's, that's it. All you need. He's the first one that comes up. And uh, whatever we've spoken here today is not financial advice. Okay? This is just our own opinion. So just don't, don't basically take our word for it and lose all your money and come and blame us. Thank you so much for listening and uh, we hope you guys took away something from today. Uh, and if you guys want to suggest more topics and if you like this topic, leave us a DM on Instagram or just reach out to us on our socials, okay? Thank you so much for listening. We'll catch you guys next time.